Hey there guys, how's it going? It is August 4th today. Um, as you can clearly see, we're down here at the South Farm. Um, you can also tell that our, or you can see that our grass is very brown, it's dry. Um, it's a drought again down here this year, unfortunately. Um, but my combine came and I wanted to reveal what I have chosen. I definitely feel bad for all the farmers out there who are waiting on equipment, whether that be headers, tractors, combines, whatever it might be, grain augers, bins. Uh, it seems like everything's ridiculously backlogged and ours just came in just in the nick of time as we are going to uh, start harvesting next week. So you guys are caught up as much as you're ever going to get caught up. Normally you never go past two weeks. You're always two weeks behind. That's how it is. And uh, I've been run off my feet down here to be quite honest with you. I've wanted to do so many videos. We, got, we need to still do so many more videos. Uh, but I just simply just don't have the time to do it. So, South Farm crop update, dry, drought conditions. This here is wheat, spring wheat, part red. And uh, it is a really poor crop, although this is probably still gonna be our best crop. So, it is around shin height. It's very short. We hope this runs around 10 bushels which I guess is still better than last year. Our cereals ran four bushel last year. Our lentils ran two bushel last year. We still had to cut it to get our seed back. We're gonna be doing the exact same thing. We hope for a little better. Hoping for 10 bushel on the cereals. Hoping we not get there. And uh, it's gonna be back down to two, three bushel on the lentils, would be my prediction. And um, probably around five bushel on the mustard would be my prediction. So. I always said we battle drought eight years out of 10 and it's so true. We're drier than the freaking Calahari Desert down here. Calahari Desert gets more rain than we do, actually. And, uh, but you know what? We're always next year country until I guess there is no next year, but we'll do, we make do with what we have to do to farm. We just try to adapt. And then I guess I should mention, whatever the drought hasn't taken out of the crop, the grasshoppers have taken the rest. We've had grasshoppers in some, in some fields near biblical proportions okay like you're walking it the ground just moving with hoppers like it's like a war zone when you're driving down with the trucks like you're not quite to the windshield wiper yet but when you're on the highway it just looks like you littered gravel on the highway it just looks like stones and rocks it's just solid grasshoppers and it makes the highway greasy actually like it's where it's ridiculous oh yeah and i guess i should it's probably obvious but uh we won't be running the Fent Ideal Combines this year. We traded them all off uh, and then they actually went to auction. So, you know, I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it again. The Ideal Combines worked awesome when they were running. We really liked their sample. We really liked their capacity. Uh, we liked their losses, but they just weren't built heavy enough and they just weren't reliable. I know they're still like a heavy combine when you want to haul them, but when you actually pull the guts out and you see what that steel's made out of, uh, it's they just wear out too easy especially if you're in pulses all the time so anyways we won't be running those combines I guess that was probably obvious all right I'll show you what we got here so there it is it's the John Deere uh, x9 1000 I actually got two of them one's gonna stay at the south farm one's gonna go to the north farm because I still have my 690 down here We'll do an update on that as well. I know you guys have a lot of questions. I probably can't answer them all this video, but we will get to them. Sorry about the wind down here. I opened up some shields so we can take a peek. I'm gonna go all small wire concave for down here got uh, some filler plates. I pulled one filler plate off and I'm like, holy crap, how the heck do I put this stupid thing back on? <laughs> uh, I gotta still figure that out. Um, let's climb up the ladder here. Not sure what I feel about this ladder. I like that it's not a poly fuel tank, like the ideals were. That's a lot of hydraulic hoses and lines and so on and so forth. Seems like a very big radiator, but maybe it's no bigger. I don't know. Like, I don't know, guys. I have no idea. We have a lot of learning to do, but I like to do it with you. You guys know that. That's how Mike rolls. All right. So 
I just put the filler plate back on. It wasn't too hard to do, I guess. I just kind of had to mess around with it a little bit. I definitely don't like these tabs to uh, put these plastic shields on. Not a fan of all these tabs coming out which way and around. But I guess it is what it is. In fact, I don't know about this whole shield system here. They don't go on super awesome. And it's very easy to pop the rubber off. On the S series, they just slide in one end, actually really easy. Then they just overlap and it just little snaps. Super easy. This, this, you gotta make sure you can squish it up into there. And then push it. Okay, obviously, oh, it's gonna have to go in over here. Okay, I gotta put you guys down. And then, There it is. Oh, wow. Pop this thing down. Like that. And this goofy one. Like that. Tighten him in. Probably like this. They gotta be on this. Sorry about the wind. It's supposed to be blowing like 70k out here. And these, and then. So this one goes, sorry, this one, pop our seal off here, loosen it off a little bit here. How the heck does this thing go? Okay, well you guys get the idea, I gotta finish this up. Definitely not a fan of it, that's for sure. Okay, we got that. We'll close these puppies up. Oh boy, I got some pretty good shocks on here, which is good. Or I gotta eat more. <laughs> and this just folds up. Oh. Perfect. All right, so that's kind of the gist of it. We'll do a much thorough, much more thorough review. Oh heck, we're gonna have lots of videos of it. So this is our. Uh, Rock trap opens a little bit different than the S series. Oh, boy, everything is tight on this puppy, that's for sure. One of the things I don't like is they went to steel. I told you that before. Uh, I wish they would have stayed cast um, bars. But I am looking forward to running it. I am looking forward to uh, putting it up beside the S series. So yeah, um, I just started the combine up here. Uh, I'm just gonna do a little summary and kind of conclude. I have to head up to the North Farm here uh, yet this afternoon, so I gotta speed this up. So yes, I did get the two uh, 1000s. One's gonna stay here, one's gonna go north. Uh, my family actually, they went uh, S-Series. We also picked up some more uh, used S-Series as well. Um, I think my older brother Terry picked up another one. Dad picked up another one. So we'll be running eight down here. Uh, S series and uh, one X and then one X up at the North Farm. That's kind of how it's all going to shake down. You probably got a lot of questions like, Mike, why did you choose the John Deere? Well, I really kind of wanted to do the twin rotor deal. I kind of wanted to try that again, and I know New Holland uh, has had a twin rotor out for a lot longer time and probably had that thing perfected by now. But when you're trying to trade out of combines and you want to do a combine deal and a trade, you're way better doing everything together. All the combines for one color. Uh, if you're going to pick and choose, it's going to cost you way more money because you don't get the discounts. You know, you can trade six combines for six combines type deal. Not like, well, I'll trade you two combines here and I'll trade one combine over there and I'll trade four combines over there. It doesn't work like that. Uh, normally, it's always a package deal and uh, it's better to do a package deal. So that's why we green. And then the other reason why we went green as well is uh, a lot of times it comes down to who wants your trades. Who's going to pay you the most money, I should say, for your trades? So is CNH going to pay you the most money for your trades? Case New Holland, is John Deere going to pay you the most money for your trades? Is Claus going to pay you the most money for your trades? John Deere, when Mother Deere comes to the table, they pay the most money for the trades. So we're like, okay, there you go. It comes down to business at the end of the day. We are in a business. We love farming, but at the end of the day, it's still a business. So that's kind of just why. And uh, let's just run up top here and quickly take a look at the cab. Sorry about the wind. 
not sure about this ladder yet. I think it, well, I don't know. Anyway, I, we got a lot of learning to do, that's for sure. We got a lot of learning to do. Oh yeah, I got a 6,000 receiver on here. Because that uh, one for the X9, that little green disc, or yellow disc, it's only this thick. Uh, it's back order. I give it else. Oh. Woo. So, uh, does Mike know how to run all this? Absolutely not. But we're gonna learn together. So we got some pretty cool cup holders here. Obviously, that's the most important thing. Add that in a sound system. I'll put that down there for right now. Uh, this folds out. Okay, these ones come. Holy. There we go. So uh, there is five cup holders, so that's important. This is a different cab than the S series. You got your shelving unit, some USB ports, and some blah 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 down there. I still gotta put my two-way radio in. So yeah, this is a wider cab, I should say. I do believe it is anyway, sure looks like it. Got our fridge, guys, we actually have a fridge. Instead of going back, the Ideals only had a cooler. It would melt the cheese on my bun in there. And that was always slightly annoying. Um, we have our uh, side windshield wiper because combining in the rain is super important. That's something that I always wanted to do. <laughs> oh man, and then we got our radio up here. Obviously, the speakers are outside the liner, so that's a really good thing. John Deere's known to have a really good sound system. I don't know what's more important, actually. A sound system or cup holders in the right locations. <sighs> that's a tough one. But anyways, I guess it does have a massage seat. I do believe that they partnered with BMW for that. And uh, you know what? Why not? At the price of these things, it should come with a whole heck of a lot more than a massage seat. It should come with a swimming pool in the back. It should come with, uh, I don't know, like auto features to wipe the smudges out of your windows, you know, pull the chaff off your feeder house. Anyways, I do look forward to uh, running these things up against the S-Series, but you gotta remember, we have no crop, again. So it's pretty hard to thrash and do a good job cleaning if you don't have anything to run through your combine. So that's unfortunate. but. You know, we might only have a 10 bushel crop of wheat, but we probably have a 40 bushel crop of grasshoppers out there. So uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see how we can keep all the grasshoppers out of these tanks. Um, because you actually, that is a problem. If you have too many hoppers, uh, you can, your, your grain can spoil. You have to clean the hoppers out. We've had to do that before in the past. It's been quite a few years, but we've actually had to clean our grain just to get the hoppers out of it. But hopefully we can clean those up. Um, but yeah, I'd like to do some comparison between the 50-foot John Deere and the 50-foot Honey Bee. Uh, maybe even uh, my arm's getting tired. i got to pass you guys back and forth here. Um, there's going to be zero There's going to be zero performance differences between the S and the X. You'd need to get into some 60 bushel crops, I think, to start to see some of that. So this thing will have about the same performance as a 9600 combine with a 50-foot head. <laughs> oh, man, it's so true, though. It's so true. Um, anyways... I'm going to conclude. I look forward to uh, doing a bunch of videos you guys with me. So thanks for following me around. And uh, I will catch you guys on the flip side. If you guys want to see a little bit more of what's going on, you know, the day of the day, I do stay pretty active, pretty dang active on Patreon. I have trouble keeping up with these videos. I actually did think about uh, stopping YouTube or at least reducing the videos to maybe one a week or maybe one every 10 days. I'm just, to be honest, I'm just absolutely run off my feet. And uh, things are getting behind now. And I'm starting to see that, so I have to, might have to make some tough calls here in the future. But as of right now, it's combine season. Everyone loves harvest, so we're going to pump out a few more videos to release what I, whatever I can get done. And, uh, but yeah, I look forward to uh, hanging out with you guys. Okay, adios.